Hey guys, welcome back to ZR Chess. Super excited today, we're going over one of the greatest chess games of all time, the Opera Game. So, this was a game played back in 1858. <clears throat> it was played in the Opera House in Paris, and that's why it's called the Opera Game. And <clears throat> it was played by a guy named Paul Morphy. Incredible player with an incredible attack, and this kind of showcases his whole attack, and uh, and is a really good example of um, of when to sacrifice and uh, how to attack in general, how to bring out your pieces in a good way and make your opponent off balance, um, force him to do stuff he doesn't want to do, and end up crushing them. So this was uh, he was not playing one opponent. <clears throat> he was actually teamed up against a duo, Duke Carl II and uh, Count Essaward. They, I, I can't, I can't pronounce that. So two people are on the other side of this guy, and they're conversing each move about which move to do. So he's essentially playing one on two, and the better, you know, these two guys are trying to decide how to beat this guy. It's like two guys trying to beat a computer engine, and he just wipes the floor with them. It's fantastic, um, and that's that's kind of why this was a big deal as well. Um, he wasn't just playing one person, he was playing two, and the way he won was humiliating, and uh, and so it was just, it's one of the best games of all time. Um, it's actually ranked up there on chess.com, I think number two best game of all time. So, we will go ahead and get into the game, and starts off with a uh, king opening, and then uh, Paul goes into just a, a knight f3, a knight's king game, and uh, and then d6 comes out. Uh, attacking the center, I'm sorry, nope, d6 comes out. Protecting his, his piece here from Paul's knight, and uh, it looks like a normal opening so far, nothing crazy. Um, so then we go d4, uh, immediately attacking the center and trying to get the center. So he's already starting an attack on move three. Um, now he can go ahead and take, but then the queen comes out, uh, or the knight, and it just puts us in, in him in a good position. So instead, um, they decide to bring the bishop out and pin the knight. Now uh, the knight can't really move because the bishop pinned the queen, but it doesn't matter. We, they don't have any, he doesn't have an attack or anything. Uh, if there was a pawn that was about to take here and attack the knight, then he'd be screwed because he can't move his knight and he'd lose a knight. But there's there's nothing here and there's no attack on the knight. So um, if the bishop takes, queen takes, no big deal. So he decides to ignore that and goes ahead and takes in the center, which, you know, um, they let him take the center because they didn't take him first. So he goes ahead and initiates the first attack. Now, if uh, if they go ahead and take here first, um, it's good to note that uh, that taking with the queen puts them in a rough position because they can't castle after this. And they really want to castle to get safe. Um, so that's, that's not necessarily a great move. So after he takes here, instead, they go ahead and take the knight, um, trying to force the queen to take. Sure, he can take back with the pawn, but it ruins his king side. And uh, if he's wanting to, to castle here, it could be problematic later on. So he goes ahead and takes back with the queen. Also, iron down on the f7 square. So they go ahead and take back with the pawn. And now, um, I don't know if you've heard of the Scholar's Mate. Um, it's a, a very basic four-move checkmate. And this is the same premise here. Um, he brings the bishop out, iron down, queen, bishop on the f7, looking to get an easy checkmate. And uh, he knows he's not going to get an easy checkmate because he's playing good players. But um, keeping the pressure up <clears throat> and causing, uh, forcing black to do, um, to play defensively. He has to. So he goes ahead and brings the knight out, uh, blocking the queen from getting there. Queen comes over to b3, attacking again on this square, threatening check. And then, uh, and then mate after queen e6. Yeah, so threatening check and mate. And uh, so he's got to do something, you know, once again, and... There's not a whole lot of moves that can really protect this. Um, I mean, he could bring the king out and run away. Um, other than that, he's got to use his queen. And he decides to put the queen here on e7, uh, protect the square. And so it's it's a good protection. It just doesn't it just doesn't do it. So um, there's this opening right here. Queen takes b7, and uh, looks like we win the rook that way. Um, and, but it's a little deceiving because after 
Uh, queen takes b7. Um, queen comes to b4, forcing a trade. And then after trading, it's a pretty even game. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say black is that much worse off. Um, it might not even be worse off at all after after coming back and, and doing um, change some stuff up. So it puts white in, it's not a, a blunder, but it puts black in a uh, in an even position. And right now he's not in an even position. Black is on the defense. And he Paul Morphy has to keep up the heat. So instead of playing, Queen takes b7, he brings out knight c3. Knight c3 is threatening to come here and attack the queen, it's threatening to come here and threaten a fork. Um, it's threatening a lot of different stuff uh, just to come into the play and uh, and try to make some make some havoc. So instead of trying to get just a pawn up or uh, with a you know a chance of getting a rook, he's not going to get the rook. Um, he goes ahead and brings the knight out, getting all his pieces together to ready to launch an all out attack, a slaughter. So from there, he brings the pawn up, protecting against the knight, going to uh, d5 and b5. And uh, so he goes ahead now and do, do, do. that's right, g5, bishop g5, pinning the knight to the queen. <clears throat> so now since this knight is pinned, there's a few different things. Knight can, uh, knight can come up here, do whatever he wants eventually. Um, this knight is not going to be able to protect on this square. Uh, and so it also opens us up to castle queenside, We're having a rook on a d file, an open d file, by the way, and uh, and then once white's castle, black still can't castle because we've got him locked up here because he has to have this queen here preventing us from checkmating him, and it's taking up all his time. So he can't even get this bishop out to castle, and pff, there's no way he wants to castle this way. Look at all this open territory. Just a nightmare. So comes out and pins the knight to the queen, and it's it's uh it's just another attack, you know, another attack coming out. Now if you count one, two, three, four minor pieces out, black has two, one that's not coming out anywhere in the near future. Um, same with both rooks, and uh, and the knight can't really do much either. He can come here. That's about it. I mean, in here, which either way do him nothing. This one at least defense, but not a whole lot. So, to this, black white b5, um, attacking the bishop, wanting to kick the bishop back and get off this diagonal, and Paul Morphy said, uh, no, no, I want my bishop there. Um, so let's go ahead and launch the all-out attack that we've been playing in here with all our pieces, and let's get crazy. So the knight goes ahead and takes the pawn on b5, and, um, he takes back with the pawn, and this lets off a chain reaction of destruction. So the pawn, uh, bishop takes, giving check. Um, black doesn't have very many good moves here. He can't block with that, because then we take his queen. Um, hence the uh, why the pin is so important to us. We don't want to block with the queen, obviously. If we move the king, then uh, we castle with check, and it's going to be a nightmare after we get our queen into the game. So really the only way is to block with the knight. That's the best move here. Unfortunately for black, it's still not a great move. So um, goes ahead and castles, bringing the rook to attack on that knight. And uh, so black goes ahead and brings the, the rook here, um, hoping to protect this knight. He's got one, two, three pieces protecting it. And uh, Paul Morphy has two pieces attacking it. So you'd think, you know, he's safe, right? No, not at all. So... Rook takes the knight. Now this knight can't take still. He can, but if he does that, we're gonna take back take his queen out, and uh, it's, that's not good for Black at all. Um, so after taking here, he really needs to take back with the rook to try to save face. Now we've got his rook pin as well as his knight. We've got two pins going on here, and this rook pin is gonna be very important after not, uh, rook H D one. So this is uh, attacking the rook. He can't move it because it's pinned. He's in a nightmare position, but he knows it. And and this pin isn't helping either because he can't he can't defend. He can't do anything. So he needs to get this pin undone. So what he does, he goes uh, queen e six, and 
unpins the, the 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 knight and hoping to trade off queens. Trading off queens would be great for him right now because this queen is going to be an essential part of the attack. And uh, but he doesn't want to do that. Paul Morphy doesn't want to do that. He goes and takes the rook and um, check, um, forks the king and the queen. So he really has to take back with this knight. Queen's not pinned anymore, which is great for them, right? Well, once they take, um, it's all over with crime. Because uh, there's a sequence here. See if you can find it on how Paul goes ahead and checkmates his opponent. Um, it's it's not trading off queens, I'll tell you that. Now, he comes down here to b8, check. King can't move anywhere, can't block with anything except to take with the knight. After he takes with the knight, it's checkmate with the rook because the bishop's protecting it. Beautiful game. Nothing can touch this rook. And this is checkmate. He gives away all his pieces. He's down an incredible amount. He's got a, a knight and a queen and uh, ends up pulling the checkmate in uh, just as planned. Um, so it's a fantastic game, um, like I had said, and uh, good one to study, good one to memorize. Uh, some chess games I actually do recommend to memorize, something like this. Um, I memorized this over the week while I was working on this. And it's good to know for when you're playing a live game, just to know different... I mean, you're probably not going to actually play the opera game against somebody. Um, it's the, the odds are very small. But if you get in a position and you've got it memorized, you might know some ideas, some key ideas from it. And be able to think, hey, you know, I'd like to get my bishop and my queen here to both attack on uh, on f7. I'd like to get um, a bishop to uh, to put a position right by the king where I can checkmate with a rook. Um, and then maybe you'll even see in a position where you can sacrifice a knight and, uh, and a bishop to get some sort of uh, advantage or a checkmate. Um, so always good to look at these incredible games and uh, see what we can learn from them. So um, that's all I got for you. This is the, the opera game, um, one of my favorite chess games to watch. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about it. Um, let me know if you think there was something else Black could have done uh, toward the end here to get out of it. Nothing that I see, so um, let me know your thoughts on it. Like, subscribe, I'll see you guys next time.